Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. We begin tonight with a live look at our weather situation. Some heavy rain out there and it is expected to continue throughout the night. Yeah, let's head straight to meteorologist Mia Montgomery, who's been keeping us up to date with the latest. Mia, that is a very colorful, colorful radar. Yes, it is pretty colorful out there for we have been monitoring some scattered rain and even some thunderstorms that have not just been moving through South Central Texas, but here in Bear County over the past hour. Let's get you a look at that radar so you can see the activity that we have moving through late this Friday night. The bulk of the storms here in Bear County now moving through the far northern portions of the county into southern Kendall as well as Comal County. Also near New Braunfels, some heavier downpours there. National Weather Service actually saying that some winds in excess of 40 miles per hour and maybe some half inch hail possible with that as it moves to the northeast at about 40 miles per hour. Bulverde seeing some of the rain. Bernie some heavier rain as that downpour continues to push farther up to the north and really this activity is just speckled across portions of our area. So that's what we'll be monitoring through the overnight hours tonight. More of that is certainly possible and then into Saturday a few lingering showers possible first thing in the morning before we see more sunshine return into the afternoon. We'll have a full look at what we can expect tonight plus this weekend in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. A fight inside Ingram Park Mall leads to a shooting in the parking lot tonight. In San Antonio police confirming there is no threat to the public and this is an isolated shooting. Officers were called to the scene of that shooting around 6 p.m. on the west side of the mall. Here's what we know. Two groups got into a fight inside the mall, but then headed outside through the J.C. Penney exit. When police arrived, they found a young woman who was shot in the arm. She was taken to University Hospital and is expected to be okay. Police locked down that one jo door at J.C. Penney while they assisted the scene, assessed the scene, and questioned the suspect and witnesses. Detectives plan to use security footage for their investigation. A woman is in police custody tonight, accused of stabbing her 17-year-old nephew. That teen now in serious condition. The stabbing happened around 9 p.m. at a home on Fortuna Street near Old Highway 90 West and Southwest 36th Street. San Antonio police say it's unclear right now what led up to that stabbing, but they say the aunt allegedly pulled a knife. But when they arrived, the teen had possible life threatening injuries. He was taken to the hospital where he's now recovering. A homeowner grateful firefighters were able to stop a fire in his garage from spreading to the whole house on the southeast side. The homeowner says it wasn't until the lights in the home started to flicker that he investigated and found the fire in the garage around 9 this morning at his home on Glamis Avenue near East South Cross. The time fire crews arrived, the garage was fully engulfed. The garage was deemed a total loss along with everything inside of it, including a vehicle the homeowner was restoring. It is definitely beginning to feel a lot like Christmas here in San Antonio. Thousands of people filling the Riverwalk tonight for the 41st Ford Holiday River Parade and River Lighting. The night team's Alyssa Cole talked to some of the many spectators who turned out for this beloved San Antonio tradition. Happy Holidays! It's one of the most unique Christmas parades in the country. This year's Ford Holiday River Parade featured 28 illuminated floats traveling along a four mile route on the San Antonio River, bringing Christmas joy to families. I love looking at lights and looking at floats. And anticipated special appearances have some on the edge of their seats. Santa's gonna be on one of the floats. Surrounded by more than 100,000 lights, People who traveled from afar say it was worth the journey. We're visiting my brother who's in the military. He's getting ready to get shipped off to Maryland next week. So we're celebrating Thanksgiving with him from Port Natchez, Texas. This year's themes highlights traditions around the world, like Cuban salsa and mambo dancing. It's two hours of just waving and dancing for people and letting them express a smile. The energy from the parade getting people excited for the holiday. Families sharing what they're anticipating the most on Christmas Day. The presents. Yeah, the presents. Getting presents. While the last floats pass by, families sharing gratitude for the opportunity to be together on a special night. It's kind of hard to explain. Like, you can't really put it into words, you know? Like just that feeling of you being around your family and friends and all the people that you love. Families tell me the most special part about tonight is simply making memories, coming back year after year to enjoy this cherished tradition. Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Three, two, one. 
And even more Christmas spirit, hundreds of people downtown tonight for the official HEB tree lighting ceremony happening at Travis Park. Groups of family and friends enjoyed the tree lighting, free ice skating, musical performances, and it was the perfect place for kids to write their letters to Santa Claus. If you're looking to have some fun, the Rotary Ice Rink will be open all through December into the new year. Brown Friday. Have you ever heard of it? It's what a lot of plumbers call the day after Thanksgiving. Typically, plumbers receive up to 50% more calls than usual. The night team's Alicia Barrera spoke to a local plumbing company who explains why the gut-busting meals for the dra people drain are keeping them so busy. This thing never gets any lighter. It's the ugly aftermath from all the turkey, the fixings, and sweets. A fluid situation keeping plumbers around the city fully booked and... It's been pretty busy. We got about four calls on us today. The team at George Plumbing has been prepping for their busiest day of the year. Through the uh, toilet, it leaked out. Typically, about 30% of our jobs are sewer and drain related. Today, it was over 80%. For shoppers, it's Black Friday, but in the plumbing world, the Friday after Thanksgiving is often referred to as Brown Friday. Drain line issues, um, basically clogged sewer lines, um, people flushing stuff down the toilet that shouldn't be flushed. But most of the time, the issue starts with your yummy Thanksgiving scraps. Most of the time, what people do is throw it down the drain and forget about it. So big things like potato peels and bones and stuff like that, you don't necessarily want to put down the drain. It's coming up through the... And while some repairs are easy, others can quickly add up. Typical unclogging of a main sewer line is 300 to $400. And to avoid issues at the toilet or sink that could potentially lead to a hefty plumbing bill, the key is the water. Running more water, flushing more times, theoretically would help push the waste down better. Alicia Barrera, KSAT, 12 News. From pipe busting problems to door busting deals, we have seen long lines and videos of people fighting over products. Yep, but those Black Friday traditions could be a thing of the past. The night team's Camilla Wada spoke with shoppers about why this year seems more lackluster. I need to catch some sleep. I'm tired. Some shoppers were at the doors of Best Buy near 1604 and 281 at 430 this morning. Many were looking for bargains on TVs, headphones and other electronics. But the days of doorbuster deals seem to be done. Both a little of the tradition, I guess, a little nostalgia there. Major retail stores like Best Buy are straying away from those doorbuster sales where people have to come in early to get the deal. Instead, those savings are throughout the month or the holiday holiday weekend and that's why there are very few people here at the store this morning. This year for sure like online shopping is like kind of like taking over so I guess like Cyber Monday would probably be like the most ideal time. But Last year many shoppers were rushing to stores to get their hands on hard to find items. Supply chain issues were to blame. Some shoppers also had more to spend last year thanks in part to stimulus checks. If we just came in the morning and saw what we could get. But this year the rising costs of gas, groceries and energy as shoppers reluctant to spend heavy this Black Friday. The National Retail Federation estimates holiday sales growth is down from 14% last year to nearly 6% this year. Michael Rodriguez says the deals are not as good as they were in the past. If you get the right thing, right? If you're looking for something and you're able to find it, then you have. But in general, no, there ain't like a lot of great sales. It's, it's somewhat limited. There is still time to shop for gifts during Small Business Saturday. Kamalia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. The gunman has been identified in the deadly mass shooting at a Walmart in Virginia. This as more witnesses and survivors come forward. Why one of those survivors said the gunman chose to spare her life. A note shedding some light on what may have led to that shooting at a Virginia Walmart. Investigators say the note was found on a phone belonging to that 31 year old suspect. The Chesapeake, Virginia Police Department says that note refers to killing himself and others and includes complaints about his coworkers. The suspect has been identified as a manager at that store. One employee says the suspect willingly spared her life because she was new. He had the gun pointed at me. And then he went like this and put the gun up. And then he he just looked at me and said, Jesse, go home. 
Six employees were killed, including a 16 year old. Police say the suspect also took his own life. Today, police also confirmed he bought the nine millimeter handgun that was used in the shooting on the morning of the shooting. That purchase made legally. All right, as we take a look outside with live cam here this Friday night, you can see still some raindrops out there. Traffic moving a little slow thanks to those roads being damp. We did find some heavy downpours and a couple of strong thunderstorms moved through Bear County over the past hour, hour and a half. The bulk of that heavy rain now north of Bear County, but we do have a new severe thunderstorm warning that I want to get you updated on for our friends out there in eastern Comal County and northern Guadalupe County. This was issued by the National Weather Service for the potential to find hail up to the size of quarters. This is moving to the northeast now at 45 miles per hour. So basically up I 35 that's headed for San Marcos. This warning is going to run through 1115 PM here tonight and really where you see this purple color near New Braunfels stretching up to green right along Highway 46 there. That's where if we are finding some quarter size hail, that's where it would be. But again, that is moving farther up to the northeast at about 45 miles per hour headed up I 35 closer to San Marcos and then into Hayes County. So we'll keep eyes on that elsewhere, non severe thunderstorms, but still likely some lightning and some rumbles of thunder, keeping some folks awake at times up in Kendall County, seeing some heavier downpours just to the north of Bernie south of comfort that activity moving to the north as well. Medina Lake picking up on some heavier downpours late tonight as well. Wilson County heavy downpour just crossed over Highway 181 near Floresville that now trekking closer to Highway 87 Stockdale stretching up to Vernia. You will be seeing some heavy rain here shortly. Some lingering showers across our far eastern counties near Gonzales. A few sprinkles out there in Lavaca County near Hallettsville as well as Shiner and then across our far western counties. Non severe, but again, still monitoring some spotty showers and a couple of heavy downpours pushing towards and across the Highway 90 corridor. All of this activity will continue in some way, shape or form through the overnight hours thanks to an area of low pressure out in West Texas. Says. So don't be surprised if you do wake up at times overnight to hear just a few more rumbles of thunder out there as well as some heavy rain walking you through your future cast here early tomorrow morning. Generally before the sun comes up, we should start to see some clearing from west to east. But I do think if you are waking up early tomorrow, stepping out, we do have the potential to find a few lingering showers first thing in the morning, but then the rest of that activity should clear and we should find more sunshine heading into tomorrow afternoon. It is possible that on top of what we've already seen, we could find upwards of about a half of an inch in spots, maybe some localized higher totals. Temperature wise, we'll start off our Saturday in the upper 40s, low 50s with some lingering clouds. And then again, that does clear into the afternoon. We'll see the sunshine work its way back into South Central Texas, upper 50s, low 60s. For those daytime highs, it'll be windy tomorrow, gusts upwards of 30 miles per hour. So if you have any outdoor holiday decorating, you need to get on the ladder. Sunday is probably the better day to do that with less wind. Don't worry, Tim's already done it. I have already got it <laughs> out of the way. Perfectly safe. Survived this one. Survived it. All right, Greg, uh, some high school teams having to play in some sloppy weather tonight. Yeah, and you know what? The 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 most of it was kind of towards our east. Shiner was affected. They had yeah. several lightning delays. When we come back here, though, Brennan is able to top Lake Travis. When we come back, the Longhorns are also still in the running, by the way, for the Big 12 championship game. When we come back, all the highlights in sports. season, a last second field goal. Lake Travis took on another San Antonio powerhouse with the Brennan Bears in the Class 6A Regional Semifinals tonight in New Bravos. The Bears pounce early on the Cavaliers' seven-yard line. Ashton DeBose takes a snap, feeling the pressure. He escapes the pocket, his right, slips out of a tackle, then cuts back, turns up field, and runs it in for the first touchdown of the game. They miss the extra point, 6 nothing. Brennan Lake Travis takes the lead in the second when Caden Leone lost this one to the end zone, and Seth Galbraith 
comes down with it. Seven to six Cavaliers. The Bears respond. Dubose with the shotgun. Takes the snap. Keeps it on the design run. He lowers his shoulder to power his way in from seven yards out. 13 to seven. Brennan in the final from New Braunfels. Brennan takes it 34-17. At the Rock Pile this afternoon in the Class 6A Regional Semifinal Round. Austin Westlake taking on San Benito. First quarter, Westlake jumps out to the early lead when Jack Kaiser plows his way into the end zone. The goal line touchdown makes it 7-0. The Chaparral's forced San Benito to punt and it's blocked by Keaton Kubeka and picked up by Brett May he returns it to the San Benito 26-yard line a few plays later. Kaiser scores his second touchdown of the game, 14-0 Westlake, the final from Alamo Stadium. Westlake wins it 44-7. Huge rematch in the Class 5A Division II third round. Alamo Heights taking on Liberty Hill at Bass Rap Memorial Stadium. Fast forward to the fourth quarter. Mules trail 31-25. Quarterback Conley McKenna keeps it himself, powers over the goal line for the six-yard touchdown. High six a lead, 32-31 with three minutes to play. But the Panthers answer on the ensuing drive. Handoff goes to Noah Long. He raises in for the seven-yard score. The two-point conversion, by the way, is no good, so it's 37-32 Liberty Hill. Alamo Heights has one last chance to win the game. Four seconds left. McKenna lobs it into the end zone, but the pass just falls incomplete after it's tipped up. The Panthers celebrate on the sideline. Heights falls 37-32. There's one play somewhere that you can point a finger at, but that's not the reality. It's it's the whole game. We had opportunities in the first half to score that we didn't uh, when our defense was playing lights out. And, and so uh, it's a total team effort uh, when you win. It's a total team effort when you come up short. But I know this one stings. All right, let's take a look now at these finals, see how it plays out. Alamo Heights falls, Liberty Hill advances. They take on the winner of Veterans Memorial and Corpus Christi Flower Bluff. That game was moved to tomorrow due to weather at 2 o'clock. And Brennan over Lake Travis, 34-17. They now play Austin Westlake, who beat San Benito 44-7. That game will be in the Alamo Dome on Saturday. Packed house at Matador Stadium in Seguin. Seeing number three, Smith Valley take on full share in the 5A Division I playoffs. Second quarter, the Rangers already up 7-0. And Chase Sinelik hits Quentin Sampson out of the backfield. He slips out of the tackle, then spins out of another to break free down the side avoids getting tripped up on the score 37 yard touchdown 14 to nothing rangers still on the second center lake fires it to tj hunt on the slant hunt turns it upfield races in for 58 yard score 21 to nothing smithson valley the final from seguin smithson valley wins it 31 13 the harlan hawks band rocking the alamo dome as they take on austin vander griff in the 6a division two matchup first quarter harlan on the vipers 11 yard line jacob gonzalez in that quarterback he rolls out to his right he finds isaiah manchester who makes a leaping grab in the end zone seven nothing lead the vipers strike back. Running back Alex Witt takes a handoff and powers his way up the middle, bouncing off defenders, muscling in for the 16-yard touchdown. Game tied at seven, second quarter, third and goal for Harlan. Gonzalez takes a handoff, dives in for the touchdown, 14-7. Hawks, the final from the Alamo Dome. Vipers come back to win it 49-21. The rain coming down in Jordan and as the Bernie Greyhounds take on Port Lavaca Calhoun in their 4 8 playoff matchup. The Greyhounds take the first bite here. Quarterback Jackson Bays rolling out to his right, under pressure, running out of room, and he heaves one to the back of the corner in the end zone to Brooks Pettis. Makes a great effort to keep his feet inbounds for the five-yard touchdown. Seven-nothing Bernie. The Greyhounds stay on the ground this time. T.J. DeMint takes a handoff, finds Pater on the goal line score. 14 nothing Bernie. Let's check the final. Bernie wins it 51 nothing going 13-0 for the first time in school history. Class 3, a Division I playoff battle. Ferris Stadium. Blanco taking on Edna. Cowboys get on the board first. Cade Rodas. Burst through the middle, right up the middle there for the 30-yard touchdown. Edna leads 7-0. Blanco's defense bounces back on the next drive. Preston Gwynn sacks a quarterback for a big loss. The Panthers can't capitalize. Let's head to the big game coverage scoreboard to see how that one turned out. And Edna will be advancing 36-22. They will take on Lano next, who defeated Vanderbilt in Industrial 42-17. Bernie with a big shutout tonight, 51-0 to Port Lavaca Calhoun. They'll next face Cal Allen to defeat at Somerset 31-17. Elsewhere, it is Smithson Valley over full share. This is 31-13. They next advance against College Station, 52-28. And one more to show you. Harlan falls to Austin Vandergrip, 49-21. And they will next take on Dripping Springs with a big win over Harlan. Back to Matador Stadium in Seguin with the Battle of Beavers of Falls City. Came calling on the Granger Lions in the postseason. The Beavers down 14-7, but get the ball to open up the second half. Here's the kick. It's short fielded by Braylon Johnson. Fakes a handoff, starts to make his way to the far sideline. He's able to break the containment and turns it upfield as he turns on the Jets. Untouched, 75 yard touchdown. They go for two and the lead. They hand it off to Trey Simlinger who pushes the way in for the conversion 15-14 lead. But the final from Seguin, Ranger takes it 35-15 over at Hero Stadium tonight. Class 2A Division 1 showdown. Refurio and Ganado. Late second quarter. Bobcats trailing 76 but not for long. Quarterback Kalen Brown fires to the end zone for Isaiah Avery who makes a grab for the 32 yard touchdown. Refurio heads into halftime with a 12-7 lead. One more time back to the big game coverage scoreboard. See who advances into the playoffs here 
It is Refurio over Ganado, 53 to 7. The next play, Shiner, 45 7. They had a number of lightning delays in that game. And Fall City falls to Granger, 35 15. Granger will next take on Burton. That is the final now, 7 0 over Chilton. Poth, by the way, is advancing over Taft. That is the Taft located down by the coast, 55 to 13. Tidehaven is their next opponent, 41 to nothing over Brazos. Wimberley advancing big time, 64 to 6 over Gerald. They next face Lago Vista, who beat Navarro, 27 to 7. Quero with a big win tonight, 39 14. They will now take on Silsby. That is 60 to 21 victory for Silsby. And some more for you. Holy Cross, their season ends 36 32. And Cypress Christian will next face the winner of Trinity Christian, Dallas Christian. That game will be played tomorrow. The Texas Longhorns close out the regular season with a win. Next. The regular season finale in Austin this afternoon. 23rd ranked Longhorns hosting the Baylor Bears. Close game all the way to the end. Four quarter. Texas with the ball leading 24-19. Not for long. Bears Al Walcott flies around the end and gets the strip sack on Quinn Hewers. Gabe Hall picks up the fumble. Turns his 16 yards for the scoop and score. Bears by 3. 27-24. Texas turns to their ground game. B. John Robinson takes a pitch. Cuts back inside. Dies into the end zone. Texas up 31-27. Baylor trying to answer. Blake Shapin here is intercepted by Jalen Ford. Ford returns it 18 yards with Baylor 42. Texas extends their lead right here. Roshan Johnson of the Wildcat. He takes a snap, takes off to the near sideline, runs around the edge and hurdles over the defender on his way in for the 11-yard touchdown. Texas ran on 22 straight plays at the Baylor return to fumble by quarterback Quinn Hewers. Texas up 38-27. B. John Robinson moves into fourth place all-time in career rushing with yards with 3,410. Texas wins 38-27. Still has a chance of making the conference title game that Kansas can beat Kansas State on Saturday. Texas will face number four TCU for the Big 12 championship. How did we want to play our final 30 minutes, right? That's literally what I was what I was saying to him was, hey, we got 30 minutes. How, how, how's this going to go? To use a boxing analogy, we were up against the ropes. But in the end, you know, what we said all along, man, I wanted our seniors to have a special memory their last time at DKR. Hopefully they're going to look back on this one and, and be proud that uh, they were they were part of this football team this year. All right, LeBron James, the Lakers in town tonight. This is first looking to snap their six-game losing streak. Keldon Johnson driving to the rim here. He gets in the lane, puts it up, and it goes in. Spurs down four, but the Lakers pull away late in the first. Russell Westbrook throws down the two-handed punch to put L.A. up by 14 in the process. Second quarter now, Malik Branham with a catch-and-shoot three from the wing. Then Devin Vassell in the paint. Watch him spin and knock down a turnaround jumper to cut the Laker lead to 10. But the Spurs don't make another basket in the last five and a half minutes of the second quarter as LeBron James finishes the fast break with a reverse layup. Give the Lakers a 20-point lead. His first game back after missing the last five. Spurs come alive in the third. Johnson going strong to the rim. Finishes with a bucket and the foul to cut the Lakers' lead down to 12. Here we go with that. And then Trey Jones driving the baseline after that for the easy layup. And now it's a six-point game. Then Vassell gets his own rebound, puts it up and in. Spurs close the third on a 12-2 run. Only down four heading to the fourth quarter. But here come the Lakers. LeBron leading the break. He dishes Anthony Davis under the rim for the slam. A little later, same play. LeBron on the break. Dishes to David for another dunk. Davis, I should say. Lakers open the fourth on a 13-2 run. Spurs on the losing end again, 105-94. If we can get back to, to you know, starting out the games better, um, we're not, you know, digging ourselves out of that hole and, you know, it makes it a lot easier on ourselves, you know, when we're trying to, you know, fight for that win down the stretch and, you know, we might not, might not run out of gas. All right, they'll do it again tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. To the World Cup in Qatar, the United States taking on England in the group stage. 29th minute, USA's Yunus Musa takes a deep shot that is deflected off of Declan Rice. Watch it here in front of you before it's saved by Jordan Pickford in the process. But there's still no score as we go to extra time. USA's Kieran Trapier finds Harry Maguire with a cross who misses the net with a header. The final 0-0. USA needs a win in the final group match against Iran on Tuesday to advance to the knockout stages. That was totally unexpected. England was supposed to dominate yeah. that game. Watched it. It's a good one. Good. Thanks, Greg. Ties a win. We'll be right back.